Good morning. My name is Jason. I live in Weymouth in Dorset in the UK. With a good mate of mine, I founded a community Facebook page called Way Forward. To start with, the Facebook page is just a place to point out to the council or rally support for some change in relation to the peninsula, which if you don't live here is this piece of land or reclaimed land that's between the amazing harbour and the amazing beach and has been a pretty much a massive car park in the most beautiful part of Weymouth for God knows how long. And we even got a great architect and a guy who is a sustainable developer who's done massive projects to come down to Weymouth to talk to the council. And the council didn't even listen when the developer said he could raise 150 million pounds to build something truly unique and amazing for Weymouth and also build in a, um, a revenue stream, a permanent revenue stream for the council. Sorry, just got to watch where I'm going. So then, me and my mate Baz, who you might know, decided, fuck it, you know? They won't listen. Let's just do it from the bottom up. Come up with some positive stuff, some slightly strange ideas, like a couple of nutters uh, with no money. Let's just try something, do something positive. So then we just started posting positive stories, really good stuff from around the internet on the Facebook page. So then it grew and grew. Um, and we kept posting stuff, you know, tech stuff, um, green sustainability stuff. And people liked it. And we posted education stuff, you know, unusual stuff, things that work from around the world, from the internet. And um, it kept growing. And they were the kind of things that if you were, you know, watching it, you'd think, oh, why can't we do that here? So that's what we did. It worked. And then we wondered if anyone in this Facebook group that we created and, and made positive and enlivened with stuff from around the world, whether they'd come and meet us face to face, you know, and shake hands and say hello. So we got together with Air FM, the local community radio station here in Weymouth, and we had a bit of a party and an afternoon meet down here, which is the Pleasure Pier, which is about to be demolished, um, though no one really knows what's going to be in its place. Um, and about three, four hundred people turned up. We had a live radio show, and it was kind of nice, you know? It was like, wow, all these people care. And, um, and then we kept going. So we began prodding and poking. And we also started to attend council meetings because they're, they're public, they're recording them. Um, and the reason we did that and started making comments and opposing things or pointing stuff out was because, to be honest, some of the stuff they were doing was a bit shit. The reason it was shit was because it lacked vision, creativity, and it lacked, and it lacked style. So with 
positive stuff going on, we thought we'd build a website. And we hooked it up to a thing, uh, a platform called Ideascale, which we called the Ideas League for Weymouth and Portland, and encouraged people to put ideas up there or projects that they thought could improve Weymouth. And then when people liked them or voted for them, they'd rise to the top. And, and the ones at the top we try and make happen. And with virtually no money, or sometimes our own money, um, we managed to get a few things going. For example, Leviathan, the Maritime Literary Festival that James Farquharson got going, it, it nearly killed him, but he made it. Um, I managed to persuade the council to let us have the old lifeguard station at Greenhill. That's now a swim centre that over the last year, hundreds of swimmers have used and it's sustainable. It makes money, it makes a small surplus. Um, and the Ideas League itself, the big launch of it, was here at the pavilion. Baz organised an amazing day with inspirational speakers and the auditorium was full of kids. We had loads and loads of mentors helping them get their ideas together and present them. It was fabulous. So we kind of really felt things were happening. You know, we were, we were, we were changing the place. And people started contacting us saying, what are you going to do with these ideas? Have you got any money? Can you support us? We had to tell them we didn't have any money. If you want to do good things, interesting, cool things, things that regenerate, you need a bit of money, at least something to get it going. And some nice people nominated Baz and I for Good Citizen Awards, which we got here. And someone voted for us, some nice people voted for us. I made these hats as a bit of a bit of fun. But to be honest, we'd rather have had a little bit of money to get some of the projects on the Ideas League going. That would have been much more beneficial. And we kept prodding and poking and just seeing how we could try and move it forward. So <clears throat> we wrote a plan, took lots of research and time and effort to get our heads around what we were trying to do. Um, and it involved some money for community projects, so really helping at, at a grassroots level, and then some money for community businesses, so things that could make money that could, when they started making money, would put money back into the community via putting it into the community projects, the ones that don't make money. Um, and that's the plan, kind of creating this virtuous cycle of in investing in the community and then reinvesting in the community. Anyway, so we then went to see our MP um, and he thought it was great. He loved the plan. We had a, a really good laugh with him. Uh, he even wrote us a letter saying that he loved it and he thought it was a good idea. And then the Echo printed that. Um, and it was all looking great. And then he told us... And so then we went to the council and we said, look, we think we can do some good stuff. Just give us a little bit of money and let's do some good stuff. Then, when we were communicating with councillors via email, uh, trying to rally support a senior councillor, no doubt at some time probably in charge of keeping these beautiful lampposts in good condition, um, wrote to all the councillors and told them that he thought we were just doing it to make money for ourselves. So purely in self-interest, not stopping to think that we started in 2013 
and this was 2018. So, you know, years of just doing it for the hell of it and trying to make something better came down to you're only in it for yourselves. But thankfully there were 10 other councillors who were interested and wanted us to meet them to talk about our plan and they listened and they asked us some questions and they thought it was a great idea and then they said and what we'd explained to everyone was that we built with the help of an expert who did this kind of thing a, a credible and sophisticated financial model that in effect could give small amounts of money away to people to inspire them, to get them going, to help them out and then at the end of five years would break even and start making money and become a self-financing sort of entity on its own. Now we know that no one's ever achieved this feat before, you know, giving away lots of amounts of cash, expecting very little in return, and then turn it into lots more cash. Um, doesn't seem sensible, does it? No, we're not looking to open a bank, but the plan is sensible. Because we only need two or three of the community interest companies we we help set up to become successful, to find a global market, possibly, most probably, be digital businesses that do this. And the surpluses they make and the profits, basically, will pay for us to put money into lots and lots of other good projects, some that don't make any money at all. But the small number that really do succeed will make money and support the rest. It's just a numbers game. The more projects, the more people doing things, the more likely it is to succeed. Even some of the UK's best financial brains have looked at our financial plan and think it will work. And one of those financial brains is an organisation called Ethex, who raise money for ethical causes. Uh, you can Google them and see, they're quite interesting. But they had a look at our plan and then they did some due diligence, which means check it out, check us out. And they think it'll work. And they said, why don't you go away and then crowdfund a bit of the money uh, just to get going, get a bit of proof of concept, and then we'll help you raise the rest. And that's why I've been cycling around town for the last couple of days, um, standing in front of things that hopefully you'll feel some kind of deep affection for and recognize, uh, you know, for example, the King's statue, um, or somewhere where you go, oh, I threw up there once. Um, but I realized that while I've been doing this, that for seven years of trying to stimulate a sort of renaissance, sorry, um, you know, trying really, really hard, this, the answer was in front of me, potentially, in a town where I've never been to a town like it that has so many cafes, I think, and I hope you think, that the answer is probably the price of a cappuccino. Um, not even a cappuccino, a latte, a mocha, even a bloody cortado. Put simply, if most of us in Weymouth and Portland with a bit of change in our pockets donated two pounds fifty each, so the price of a cup of coffee, to our crowdfunder, we'd raise the money in no time and then we'd be able to 
get more projects going that could help the community. You know, then we might even find it's not, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that a national newspaper would print a story again, but with the headline, small seaside town declared shithole in 2014, turns itself around. And all just for the cost of a cortado. I've got a slow heart rate. 